and, and I'm pushing a product in your face. You have to ask to say, okay, I need this, where do I get it? He would calmly direct you to the right place and he would not try to upsell or cross-sell the product. So I think that, that goes quite a lot in terms of customer experience. And it also goes quite a lot in terms of how we want to build the brand. Our brand is meant to be associated with the customer experience, which obviously has to revolve around the product. Fourth point, I think, which uh, Ms. Deepak also talked about, you know, uh, so I come from a background from a, which, so for me, it's slightly different. I move from an online world into an offline world. You do not find too many people doing that. Generally, it's the other way around. You find people coming from the offline world and getting into online. So I have seen a scenario where you come with a scenario where you're trying to build a brand, which is a part of online. You try to burn money, you have a cash negative scenario into a scenario where the product becomes the hero and you try to enhance the product, enhance the brand uh, through the product. So these are two very different uh, ecosystems and I will not, I don't think we have the time or uh, to, to kind of get into quite a bit of details into it, but not keep on going on and on. But what is really important is to the consumer, the touch and feel is very important, yet in certain cases, for an online world where you're going for a branded product and when you're sitting on a PE money, you are happy to buy a product which is a Nike size 7, you know that size 7 fits you and you're getting it a 40% discount, you would do that. Now, end of the day, someone is putting the bill for you, so be it. It is not Nike who puts the bill, it's end of the day the portal which puts the bill and it's the marketer who gets happy about the fact that you know, the first consumer has walked in He's bought a product, even though the product may be bought at a discount, but still he's been able to get the consumer to come in. So online and offline, I think, I think we can talk about more as part of the panel. I think we've got an esteemed panel here. Uh, so the fifth thing which I think from my perspective is all about the fact from a digital perspective in terms of digital marketing. Uh, lifestyle, even though it's been an uh, offline store, a physical store, we spend quite a bit of money in terms of digital marketing. For us, you need to have a scenario where you're creating excitement amongst the set of consumers who necessarily may not have but access. When I say they do not have an access, they do not need to find an access to, to a television or to a print media. I have quite a number of friends who do not subscribe to a newspaper, which is the physical newspaper. They do not have televisions in the house because for them, YouTube does the print or the internet does it right. So to reach out to these set of consumers, you need to have a present in the digital uh, arena. And that's what I think we also are doing, whether be it at Twitter, be it Instagram, be it uh, uh, LinkedIn is also very effective from a recruitment perspective. So we do use all of these platforms very effectively from our side to maintain our presence on the digital uh, arena. And significantly, I think over a period of time in the last three, four years that I have seen the budgets in terms of digital spends have kept on increasing. So that's been on the increase year on year and I think that's really relevant because digital marketing is the way to go and that's constantly going to happen. Uh, lastly, I think the market here, at least I, I can talk about from a uh, physical retail perspective in our sales, is about the fact that how am I able to really direct the consumer to walk into my shop? How am I able to build the brand in terms of educating and giving the experience instead of trying to put the product on the space and trying to sell it out. So, when you look at any of our products, it's all about the fact uh, how we are able to showcase it to the consumer and creating and building a need. And sorry, Deepak, I think you, but Deepak also mentioned one more aspect in terms of intelligent writing. Uh, I think I, I to cover that. I'll just talk about it very briefly. Uh, from a physical store perspective, what you display is what really sells. And you know, for, for us, uh, what we term it as a visual merchandising, the shop window is the prime area where you're trying to attract the consumer to walk in. So that goes through a lot of calibration internally within the company to say how does that look like, uh, how it should be, what kind of products we want to showcase, do I want to showcase a product with a price tag, who am I really catering to, am I catering to a high-end consumer, am I catering to a, to a rich segment, so which is the target segment which I really get into? Uh, what is the kind of models which I want to use? You know, the mannequins and also we kind of go for the ref refurbishment of the mannequins as well. The back drop to the mannequins. So all of those goes for a change typically every season. 
So twice in a year, we keep on changing that to have a precious building. And we've seen a very significant impact of a change in a visual merchandising window to a customer walk-in. And automatically, the customer walk-in transits into a sale, which is what is relevant. So, lighting, how you are placing the product, where are you placing, what products are you placing, the price and the target segment, all of those play a very important role from a sale perspective and that's something which I think clearly your marketer is able to do very well. And I think that's where I kind of pass it on. We'll be back for questions later. Thank you. Many thanks. Okay. I hope much principal we have uh, taken a lot of it. Uh, we have uh, seen from customer perspective. There is another perspective is related to employees. So we have Kamalika Deka with us. May I request her to this year her thoughts on the employees' perspectives. Good afternoon, everyone. So my experience as an HR all throughout my professional career, you know, nine plus years of experience, I have been in the industry. So when I got this topic, it was something very close to my heart, and especially how do we relate people, you know, with retail. There was an employee once he approached me in my previous organization, and he told me, "Ma'am, I travel for some around 25 kilometer. The look distance from my house to my store is some around 25 kilometer." To reach the store at 10 o'clock in the morning, I have to leave my home at 8 o'clock. So I have a small, you know, two-year-old kid. So when I leave home at 8 o'clock, my baby is sleeping. So by the time I finish my work and I shut down the store at 8.30 or 9 o'clock, I go back home, I reach home at 11 o'clock, my baby is still sleeping. When do I get time to spend time with my family? called Employee Family Club uh, in Titan. And then there was an, uh, you know, a very bright you know, student. Uh, she was the daughter of one of her employees. So she came and told me, you know, I always see my best friend's father taking her out to park shopping you know, on Saturdays, Sundays, especially on Sundays. I always feel bad when I see my friend enjoying with her family, with her father, going for shopping, going for outing on Sundays. So one day I told my dad, Dad, my, I, I have off on Sundays. Can you also spare some time for us and go out for shopping on a Sunday? I want to spend some time with you. And my dad says, sorry, Vega, I can't take leave on Saturday, Sunday. I'm really sorry. My company doesn't allow me. This is the exact scenario that we have in retail organization. One is what we talk about the work-life balance. It's a long working hours. And of course, when you know when we have our you know families at home taking uh, at their offs on Saturday, Sunday, or on weekends, we can't give leave to our employees on weekends, especially on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We are talking about employee experience. We are talking about customer experience. There is the strong belief I have: if I am happy, I can make others happy. So if you know I have this in my mind that I'm not able to spend time with my family, how do I make my customers happy for it? So this is a big challenge that HR faces as the leader of the retail organization. That how do we really motivate our employees? How do we make our employees feel that, you know, thank God it's Monday or thank God it's Saturday, let's go to our workplace. How, how do we create that kind of culture in organization? As one of the previous speakers has mentioned about, you know, uh, about HVL branding, about employee first, that same caters to any of the organization. If you don't value your employees, don't expect that you know they will be also be you know balancing to our customers. They are internal customers, and when our internal customers are happy, then only we can make our external customers happy. In that scenario, if you see the latest retail industry scenario, the attrition are quite very high. That's the biggest challenge in any retail industry that faces. It's almost a double-digit growth. You know that the way the attrition are going up. Now, how do we really encourage employees to have such kind of, you know, uh, a fun, energetic kind of workplace? So, in that case, you know, employee uh, as an HR or whether we talk about business, finance, we all have to work together in making this organization as a great place to work. Uh, the CEO of our Jubilee Food Works, Mr. Ajay Kaur, always says, whatever you do, it should be from Bill's When you're handling, you know, your customer, it should be Bill's 
When you're handling your employee, it should be from Bilsi. The love that you have, it should come from inside. So once you have that, that only, you know, you can expect others to have. If you have to earn respect, you also have to give that respect. Then only you can get that respect. So it is all about word of mouth. If today I go to a store, I want to have a fantastic employee, no customer experience. I expect that someone who is there in the store attends me with proper attention, try to understand what is my need. Then only probably, you know, if I have a good experience, I can really, you know, I always feel that I, should, I will go and come and tell my relatives, my friends that, oh, hey, please go to that store, go to that brand, it's an amazing brand. I would like to quote an example about a customer story, the life story. Many of you have heard about the brand Titan I+. There was this one very hard touching story. Uh, it was a store in Lajput Nagar. And the store manager and few of the team members were trying to shut down the stores at 10 o'clock in the night. It was a Sunday. There was a man, a father came running, he was very tensed up. He came and he made a request to the store manager. Sir, my small kid, who is a school going kid, he has actually broken his spectacles and tomorrow he has an exam. Can you please hand him out? So in that case, the store manager would have said, he hey, sorry, it's 10 o'clock. We can't, you know, uh, we can't, we can't. So probably tomorrow okay, you should come. But for the store manager, and the, to repair the spectacle, you need a technician who will actually, you know, repair the spectacle. And the technician has already left the store. So the store manager, out of his, he went out of his way, and he called up the technician, he please come down. Because we have a, someone who will be ready to help, because his son has got an exam tomorrow. And without spectacle, without his specs, he cannot do anything. So, you know, the, uh, the, my, the team took the entire effort, helped the customer, repaired the spectacle, and, and the customer went as a happy customer at the end of the day, and you know, and that's how he and he has written a big mail to the entire company, thanking them the kind of help the company has done to him, the kind of store the title like this has done to him. I would like to say my example. I went to one of the lifestyle stores, and there was something for alteration that I gave him. So when when they had to first sell the product to me, they were too goody to me. Now he had this offer, the whole offer, and they did your whole check out. Then when finally I had to give that, you know, I bought that. I was so convinced the way, you know, that salesman handled the way he, you know, set up that product. I was very convinced. I, I bought that product. And then, you know, I had to give it for alteration. So then he said that this cannot happen today, you come tomorrow. So I went the next day. And I was pretty late because I went from my office and next day I had to go somewhere. So I was late, it was somewhere around 8 30 in the evening. So even the same thing, they were shutting down the store that point of time. I made a request, I would be down there for one month. Can you please give me, help me to give me a product? Because I have to give. This is no story. I made a request to them, can you please help me out? I'm not there. Can you please help me out? Because yesterday you were so good and today you are just giving me a different experience. You were so good to me yesterday and today you were giving me because I bought your product. And I am requesting you, now the, the mercy is on your hand, but still you are not showing any empathy towards me. This is something probably, you know, I was very upset. And believe me, from that day onwards, I am a big fan of the brand, but believe me, from that day onwards, I never go to that store. Because I had a very bad experience. When they wanted to sell the product, they were too good to me. But when I wanted help from them, they were just totally, you know, negative towards me. So can we really have, again, when the topic that has been given for today's discussion, how can we have an experimental retail environment? So I think it is a combination of both internal and external that makes, you know, an exciting environment. An exciting environment for the employees, an exciting environment for the customers. So now, again, the biggest challenge that any retail organization can have, you know, if you have talked, you know, the biggest retailers, there is an, you know, employer of choice for many employees to work there. The biggest challenge is that, you know, uh, the people, the, 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 the organization is about the talent management. There are people in the organization, you know, they are in the system for, you know, 10 years, 15 years, eight. But, you know, what is the next growth for them? So when, you know, for me to go to the next stage of my career, I need to have certain competences, certain skill sets and knowledge with me. I might be good in my present work, but what got me here won't take me there with this set of competences that I have. I need to build on my competences. 
So in the retail organization, when the market is becoming very complex, the customer needs are very high. So in that case, we also need to develop our competences along with them. And that's why the role of HR, the organization plays. How do we really enhance the competences, you know, the career growth of the employee? Probably I might come, I don't think anyone would be always be happy to be in the same job day in, day out for 10 years, 20 years and all. In this case, you know, my organization, you know, Jubilant Food Work, we have got employees. You know about Domino's is known for the use, for the major chance of the business come from delivery. We have the example in our organization where a safe delivery person has to be become an area manager. It is not that, you know, by virtue of his, uh, you know, uh, years of services in the company, he has become an area manager today. It is not that. It is the kind of skills that he has developed on year on year basis. And at the same time, the company has also invested on him. So it is very important for an organization to invest on the employees. If you don't invest, it's very difficult that you put the output. There is always a saying, you know, this is a the market is very tough, sales are not going on well, so let's stop on training and development. But that is something of a very wrong thing. When things are becoming tougher, we need to be more competent, we need, we need to be more competitive. And in that case, we need to always enhance our skills. So, and coming to that, as Mr. Siddharth has mentioned about, from a finance point of view, when we look about what is the ROI, when we have a store, what is the ROI of the store? HR plays also a very important role in the ROI of the store. That comes to the manpower coming. So what are the manpower costs? And if you see the ROI, generally the manpower cost is always the highest head you know, in the ROI of the store. So how can we make the store profitable? So in that case, retail in organizations has become very interesting. There are a lot of models which have been, you know, adopted by the companies. It is no more what, you know, the models which were there, we have someone, you know, it is not, it's no more there. There are a lot of innovations which are happening. There are a lot of, you know, new strategies which have been adopted where, you know, we can make the company profitable. At the same time, we can have the best and the best of the channels. So therefore, um, to summarize this panel discussion, I think we are here for the, uh, another few rounds of questions and to summarize this topic. My point is to create you know, a, a very exciting retail environment. There is no something called a specific model that you have. It should be always a very customer centric and employee centric. And being an HR, the HR point of view, I've been from an employer point of view, it is very important. How do we bridge the gap from becoming an employee centric as well as a customer centric company? Because the employee also plays a very important role. The way we say the customer plays a very important very, uh, you know, plays a very important role in the brand image of a company. At the same time, plus employees also plays a very important role in the brand image of the company. So when we have our happy employees, we have the happy customers. So that's all. I hand over to my panel, the next members of the panel. Thank you so much. Thank you, Monica. Uh, we have Mr. Krishna here on the panel. Uh, now we have seen from two perspectives. One is from customer perspective and from employee perspective. Mr. Ayer is from business uh, side, so I hope he can throw a good light on uh, both the sides, from customer experience as well as from employees. Uh, good afternoon all. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Jaipuri Institute for having me here and uh, speaking in front of a uh, elite audience like you people. You people have been very, very patient in listening whatever uh, the panelists have been, you know, telling you. So, <clears throat> so to tell you about myself, I am Kishan here and uh, I have worked with uh, companies like Apollo Tires, Reliance Industries Limited for petroleum retail and then Reliance Communication from their, for their retail operations and right now I am uh, trying to satisfy the, in terms of marketing, uh, right now I am trying to satisfy the furniture related needs of 30% uh, of this country population uh, working in Nilkama Limited. I am responsible for uh, distribution sales also, retail sales also and uh, modern trade sales also, which actually is a part of retail only, modern trade when we call it. So, <clears throat> as the previous panel uh, was also discussing, you know, uh, they, they mentioned that we evolve. We evolve as a customer, we evolve as a buyer, we evolve as a supplier or the producer or the service provider. So in the previous uh, two decades,